Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem clone graph. So we're given a reference to a node that is in a connected undirected graph. So it's convenient for us that the graph is completely connected. And all we wanna do is return a deep copy of that graph. In other words, a clone of that graph. And for every single node, we have two things. We are given a value and we're also given a list of its neighbors. So this is what's telling us, you know, how the graph happens to be connected. These are the edges in our graph. Now, if you're not super familiar with what a deep copy is, so let's say that this is our example, our input graph. We're not just gonna create a shallow copy, meaning like this is the exact same graph, like the color is yellow for both of these, meaning like it's the exact same graph. We didn't actually create a clone of it. So this is not what we're looking for. This is also not what we're looking for. So this is a new graph because the color is slightly different, but you see that the values aren't exactly how they're supposed to be. We have a three here, whereas we have a two in the original graph, right? So basically we have these twos uh, values mixed up. So that's not what we want either. We want an exact clone. So it has the exact same structure and values, right? The values and structure is the exact same. And this happens to be a new graph. This is not the exact same graph as this one because this one is blue, whereas this one is yellow. So how are we gonna solve this problem? Well, you can see I'm gonna use a hash map like pretty much every graph problem, and we're gonna use depth first search, where you can also use breadth first search if you want, but let me show you the general algorithm. So you can see these edges are undirected, meaning you know if one has a neighbor two, well, two is also gonna have a neighbor one in its neighbor list. So let's say that one is our entry point in the graph. What are we gonna do? You can see initially our hash map is empty. What we're gonna try to do is map the old nodes to the new nodes or the copy nodes. So we start at one. So what's the first thing we should do? Well, obviously we should create a copy of this node. That's what I'm gonna do. So create a copy of one. Now this copy of one is not complete yet, right? Because take a look at the original one. It has two neighbors, three and two. So what can I do? We know we're gonna have two neighbors for node one, right? Can I just take these two original nodes and then put them over here, three and two? No, I can't do that because for these nodes three and two, we actually have to create copies of them as well. So you can see that this is gonna be recursive. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to its first neighbor, which let's just say it happens to be two in this case, right? So I'm gonna, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna start cloning starting at two. So we're at two, we're gonna create a clone of two. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, before we make a clone of two, we know we just created a clone for one. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna map the original node one to its now clone node one. So we're mapping the old node to the new node. And I'm gonna show you why we're doing that in a second. So now we're gonna go to node two, right? And, and we're gonna create a clone of node two. So let's create that clone node two. We're also gonna add it to our hash map, right? We're mapping the old node two to its clone. So the clone in blue is the new node. So now we've cloned one and we've cloned two. And for two, now let's look at two's neighbors. Well, look, you can see that it has a neighbor of one, right? And it has a neighbor of four. So first we're gonna end up trying to do is create a clone for two because we know that we have to, in the list of neighbors for two, we have to add the clone one, which we haven't done yet. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna try to clone one, but we're gonna see in our hash map, look, we already ended up cloning one. So basically what I'm saying is now we can say, okay, we can add this edge that two is connected to one, that two has a neighbor that happens to be one. And basically the reason I'm doing that is because we know this edge is gonna be undirected. It goes both ways. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So now we know that two is connected to one. We also know we have to clone node four. So now we're gonna visit position four. Let's create a clone for four. So let's add it to our hash map as well. We're mapping the original node four to its clone. 
So now we're at the node four, we wanna clone four's neighbors. First, you see that four has a neighbor two, which we already cloned. So we're gonna take this original node four, right? We know the original node, we know the original node four has, a, has an original neighbor of two. So then we're gonna take that two, look it up in our hash map, see, okay, we already created a clone of it, and this is the clone, and then we're gonna end up taking four and connecting it to two. And let's just say that, you know, when we created the node four, we ended up connecting two to four. So let's just make this edge go both ways because we know that originally the edges are undirected. So now that we've, for four, we wanted to create a clone of two. We also want to create a clone of its second neighbor, three. So now let's create a clone of three. So we know that four is going to be able to connect to this neighbor of three. So we're creating a clone for it and we're gonna take the original three node and map it to its new uh, copy node of three. So now we're almost done, right? You can see that all four of the nodes have been copied, but for three, we haven't added three's neighbors, right? Three isn't ended up connecting to any other nodes yet, but we know in the original three has two neighbors. The first neighbor is four. So we're gonna say, okay, we know that this four needs to have a clone, but the good thing is we already created a clone for that node, and this is the clone, so now we have it. So we're gonna take three and at, and connect it to four, so we're gonna make this edge basically double-directed. And three also has another neighbor of one, and so basically what we need to do is make a clone of that one, but we look in our hash map first and we see we already cloned one. This is the clone, so we're gonna take three and connect it to one, right? But what, wait, we have one last problem, right? This one should also be connected to the three, right? You're right, and that's what we're doing recursively now. So we originally started at one, then we went to two, then we went to four, then we went to three. Now what we're gonna end up doing is reversing that because we remember we're doing this recursively, so we're gonna pop back up to four. We're gonna see four has already cloned its neighbors, three already cloned its neighbors. We're gonna pop back to two, two already cloned its neighbors. We're gonna pop back to one. One, we ended up cloning the neighbor two, right? But we didn't end up going this way. So from three now, we're gonna end up we're gonna end up checking, okay, did we already clone three? Let's look in our hash map. Yep, we already did. So this is the clone that we created. So all we really need to do is make one connected to three. So basically make this edge double directed. So now you can see that we finally created a complete clone of the graph. We did this in O of N time where N is basically uh, the number of edges plus the number of vertices, right? The number of nodes plus the number of edges connecting them because we have to basically make a clone of each of these. And with that being said, now let's jump into the code. So we remember that we only need a single data structure, old to new, which is a hash map mapping the old nodes to the new nodes. And I'm gonna implement this in depth for search. And you can see that this function is nested in the outer function, which just makes things easier, meaning that this data structure doesn't need to be passed into every single function call. But we do need to pass in every, sing every time the node that we're visiting. So in depth for search, we're gonna pass in the node First thing we're gonna check is if the node is in our hash map. If it is in our hash map, then that means we already made a clone of it. If we already made a clone of it, then I'm just gonna return that clone. We don't need to create another clone. So if it exists, return the new node. So if this statement doesn't execute, that means a clone doesn't already exist. So let's create that clone. I guess I'll call it a copy. So we're going to create a copy of this node. So we're going to use the node constructor and the value we're going to give it is the value of this original node. And we're also going to take that copy and then add it to our old to new hash map. So old to new. So the old node is just node and the new node is the copy. So we're mapping the old node to the copy. And then we want to make copies of every single neighbor of the original node, so node.neighbors. Let's go through every single neighbor and let's run depth first search on that neighbor. For the, and so basically if we run depth first search on that neighbor, what it's gonna do is it's gonna return the copy that we end up creating. And with that copy, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take this old node or, or this new node, the copy that we made, and I'm gonna take its list of neighbors 
and I'm going to append to that list of neighbors this uh, the return statement from this depth first search call. So let's copy and paste that in here. So that's all I really really need to do, depth first search, and add it to the neighbors of this copy that we just made. And once we're done making all the copies of the neighbors, then we can return the copy that we just made in the current function call. And it's actually that simple because even though this is called depth first search, it might even be better to call this function clone because cloning is basically what we're doing. We're taking the original node and creating a clone of that node and we're cloning all of its neighbors recursively. That's what this recursive call is, right? And then to the neighbors that we're creating, we're adding them or appending them to the list of neighbors of this node. And so it's actually the last thing to do is easier than you would think. We're going to call depth for search, passing in the original node that we're given in the original function call. And then we're just going to return the result of that because that's going to give us the connected graph. It doesn't really matter which node we return, I think. So any node that we end up returning is good after the entire clone has been made. Oh, and one last thing, we forgot to check one edge case. The original node that we're given could be null. So if the node is non-null, then we're going to call this function return the result. Else, if the node is null, we'll just return null. So with that being said, this function should work. And there you go. It's pretty efficient, even though this indication makes it seem like it's not. I think if I ran it one more time, it would probably be closer to like 50 or 60%. But I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.